Well, thank you very much, Mariana. And I wish also to thank you all that attended this meeting, this event. Uh, we are placing high expectation for us for learning. We, I wish to, particularly to, to thank all the people from academics, uh, from the, also from companies, from private sector uh, that are attending here and wish also to thank uh, Minister Cable for his very interesting, very uh, uh, speech. Let me, let me say that uh, briefly that uh, innovation is a very complex process, today particularly, uh, because it's a process that's subjected to uncertainty. That's not new. We, we, we know that, but uh, the complexity, so I see four major sources of uncertainty that must be coped with when we're talking about innovation. One has to do with the complexity of innovation itself. The second has to do with uh, the, sh the time span or the time frame of innovation. A third has to do with macroeconomic instability or macroeconomic uncertainty and also regulatory uncertainty. And a fourth has to do with political uncertainty and democratic process of choosing priorities in any, in any democracy that may change over time. So th those are uncertainties that are related to the national um, innovation systems. Now, w uh, let me let me stress that today processes of innovation are very complex, uh, differently from the past. No single institution, even of high standing laboratory or a company, are is able to uh, to to dominate all the competences, all the special. Uh, specialization needed for process of innovation. Today, innovation necessarily, particularly radical innovation, necessarily uh, need ecosystems, need a network of cooperation, need alliances, and that encompasses not only labs and scientific institutions, but companies, and within companies, they need innovation alliance among themselves. It is a complex process, not easy to, to articulate, not easy to, to coordinate. If we move to the time frame of innovation, it is also more complex, not only because we need long, a long-term vision, but because the different stages of innovation requires different capabilities the risks are different in each stages, and there are, in some cases, the so-called valley of death, in which critical stage requires either uh, uh, high risks, high scale, and it, it's, it's difficult. In addition to this, we have also macroeconomic, we have regulatory uncertainties, predictability of rules in all sorts of intellectual property in dividing the benefits of innovation. This is not simple. And we could add political uncertainty to this because public choices, budget choices, are subject to democratic process that may change priorities over time. So that's why having uh, institutions that are capable of thinking in the long term, like development banks, may be a important ingredient for a national system of innovation. Um, the way we finance innovation is important, I, and I think the, 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 when we conceived the idea of a national system of innovation, we must think also about the financial dim dimension. And <clears throat> in development banks, uh, can be uh, a source not just of stability, 
but also a source of long-term strategies, a source of coordination of actors. It can be also uh, a facilitator in coordinating different actors. So it can help because it, usually uh, a development bank has a double mission. It has a, a mission related democratically for elected government, short-term priority or mid-term priorities, but also because of its nature, lending at very long term, lending a 20-year loan, lending, in our case, our portfolio is average 10 year, but we have uh, many, many loans that go to 15 to 20. It forces us to think across many administrations. It forces us to have a long-term vision as a body of public servants that must look to the long term. This is a inst institutional characteristic. Of course, having the capabilities and the stability to interact and to help also the institutional process to, uh, to evolve, it is also uh, a, something that we can, we can involve and we can help. But of course, uh, it, a, a, a development bank may be an important necessary condition for innovation, particularly in a developing economy, but it's far from being sufficient. You know? If we need Schumpeterian entrepreneurs, we need uh, a, a uh, high quality scientific infrastructure platforms. Without those, we, you know, we need uh, uh, Schumpeterian entrepreneurs to, to work with. So we need, and then if we have those, then we, we can may even help to create the, the, the Schumpeterian entrepreneurs from, from startups. And we must have many different tools because to support innovation at very early stage of startups, we need to have equity tools, equ equity instruments and not credit. In other cases, for large companies, credit may do the job. In other cases, venture capital. So we must uh, be flexible. And in other cases, we must team up with ministries in order to have no reimbursable money for some critical stages. So the arrangement of finance is something complex that goes along in the innovation chain is not a simple thing. So uh, that's my vision. And I think we should, maybe I'm very um, um, op optimistic that this seminar could add more knowledge about this process. But let me finish saying that uh, we are um, now, in our case, disbursing around $3.5 billion per year in directly to innovation. We wish to do more. The Brazilian government has now created a big program for directly stimulating the private sector it's a $15 billion program. We are operating in two years this program, and it is uh, um, centered around eight big priorities, like renewable energies, uh, second generation ethanol, uh, green chemistry, uh, the space um, aeronautical and defense complex, the health complex from pharmaceuticals to equipment, the information technology complex, the, uh, all the science important projects related to the agribusiness that it is important in Brazil, energies, renewable energy, so it's an array of projects. It's well underway, we have already in this year already have committed half of the budget. We are going to, to, to the rest of this year to have the other half of the budget committed. And that's why we think that 
BNDS and the Brazilian uh, Innovation Agency will be able to next in this year and coming year to have a very substantial uh, uh, expansion of innovation. But we wish we need to do more. Uh, innovation requires not just patient financing, long-term vision, but persistence over time. No? And we must, uh, Brazil is underinvesting, particularly the private sector. Brazil is around 1.2, 1.3% of GDP. We need to jump to towards at least 2% of GDP. And the way to do it is engaging Brazil and particularly Brazilian uh, corporation, Brazilian business into long-term strategies. And I think in this way, mission-oriented uh, institutions, particularly development banks, are a important actor in this process. That's what I would have to say today with the hope that the discussions here be enlightening to, these, this, to, to us. So we hope to have a good return. Thank you so much.